Hey coaches, uh, welcome back and thanks for joining me today. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing? Uh, today I thought I'd talk about the uh, Power Wing Beast offense and my offensive strategy and what I'm trying to accomplish for the season and particular games. So uh, let's jump right into it if we could. So uh, my offensive strategy is I really want to use multiple formations uh, to disrupt the defense and really, you know, and, and not only disrupt the defense, but to do a lot of different things. But the overall of that is really to disrupt the defense. But the overall why I want to use multiple formation offense, like the Power Week Beast offense, is really about five or six things here. And the main one is really the flex flexibility that a multiple formation offense gives me. Uh, I mean, if I've got younger age groups, uh, I can run one of the formations. If I've got more experienced teams, I can expand it into three to six formations. And I get a play, you know, I, I really get this flexibility of being able to run multiple things, which, which does confuse the, uh, the defenses. But it also allows me to maximize my talent. Let's say one year on a on a on an offense, I don't get, I don't recruit because every year we get new players in our league and we have to draft and some players we can hold on to, but a lot of times we have to draft new players. So I may not have the talent to run a certain formation, but the, with the Power Wing Beast offense, I have multiple formations already built into the system that I can pick and choose. I'm not having to decide every season what I'm going to run. I already know within the system, the terminology and everything, blocking calls, what I can run. And the system gives me the flexibility if I have fastbacks. I can run uh, the swing, which is a spread double ring wing. If I have a great quarterback and some good receivers, I can run uh, the uh, spread kind of double wing and pass out of it. So it really, and if I have just basically all fullbacks and not a tailback, I can run the beast in the power eye formation. So it really allows me the flexibility and the ability to maximize my talent that I have for that season. Because you really must match your offense to the talent level. You can't force an offensive system on some running backs and players that it's not built for. I've done that, it doesn't work. So you want the multiple formation offense. And the reason I have that strategy is to basically maximize my talent also. It also allows me to run to a formation strength. You know, with the, the spread and the swing, uh, kind of double wing spread out, I can run jet sweeps. So I can run sweeps from that out of that formation. It's not a good up the middle kind of power formation, but I can I can run power eye for that. So... And power eye is not so much a great sweeping formation. So each of these multiple formations, there's a strength of the formation which allows me to run to the strength of the formation. Uh, the multiple formations also lets me hide some weaknesses. In some formations, I can hide weaker players in certain positions over other formations. I can also hide formation weaknesses, if I, you know, and that gets back to running to the formation strength. And most of all, like I said earlier, you know, it confuses defense through the play multiplier because really there's three base core, I guess, offensive formation schemes that we run. Beast, I, and the double wing, double wing kind of spread stuff. And all of those use the same terminology within their formation scheme. And so you get this play multiplier if you're running four to five, six formations, you're basically running the same play, same terminology, same blocking call, and you're getting this play multiplier because an eye formation looks similar to it, or looks different than an angle, looks different maybe than the power eye, but you can run the same play. And so you get this multiplier by just adjusting a couple of players, which that confuses a lot of youth football defense which is the confusion on youth football defense 
leads to uh, missed assignments, which leads to big gainers and touchdowns. And so we do want to confuse defenses through this, and that's a big thing for game strategy. But also multiple formation you, it, the, with the flexibility. It, you evolve and grow with your team. A lot of coaches may come in and get the book, and they have a five- and six-year-old might team. And, you know, it's really good just to run a beast formation, the base eight beast plays from there. As they get to the next level, maybe, you know, the next age group with six- and seven-year-olds, maybe you add the pie in there. And then when they get to nine and ten, you can add swing, the double wing stuff in there. And so what the multiple formation uh, power wing beast offense system does, it allows you to evolve and grow with the offense. You're not locked in. I hear so many people, I'm going to run this. You know, if we're going to run this double wing, and they don't think about any other offenses. But if they don't get the double wing backs, or they actually get better backs not to be running a double wing, they block themselves into that. What a multiple offense does for you, it, it allows you to evolve and grow, and that's what the Power Wing Beast offense does. It just gives you flexibility and opportunity to run more things. Because because really, it's more fun, and we had a player uh, a player tell us this, uh, that, uh, excuse me a second, he played for another team one season, and uh, he came back to us another season because of the way our, our league works. And he was upset that he had to go to a team that had like six plays and they were drawing up plays in the grass for certain games and didn't know what they're doing. We had a 96-play playbook with risk coaches that all the running backs have, and we go, you know, we have this whole system. And he said, you know, this is more fun and more and more challenging, and I, I like playing for you guys because you guys know what you're doing. So, you know, uh, something to take away from that is use a real playbook, use a real system, not something you're just drawing up in the dirt. Some of that, some of you may be able to work with that, but really the kids that can identify that and see what's going on there. But that's why I use a multiple formation offense. It's really the flexibility that confuses the defense, and I'm able to really maximize talent and the strengths on that. So let's get back to the overall offensive strategy here. So, you know, my overall offensive strategy in game day, really, in the season, I want to dis disrupt the defense with this multiple formation thing. I want to control the field position. Uh, I want to make sure that if I have to turn the ball over where I'm going to do that at, I want to control the clock. Uh, I want to use a lot of time on the clock. I'm, I'm uh, keeps really good offenses off the field. So uh, definitely if I'm playing a great offense that can score quickly, uh, my offense wants to keep the ball a long time so that other offense can't get back on. Uh, look, I want to run the football. Because in youth football, that's where it's all about. And I want to use all four downs. Uh, I'm not using three downs um, unless I'm pretty much backed up within the five yards of the yard line. I'm running the football. And when I pass, I'm running play action passes really to set up more run plays and to soften the defense for me. And that, you know, really you need to decide as a coach, are you a passing team? Are you a running team? Are you a misdirection team? Are you a power running team? I'm a power running team with some play action packs missed in. That's who I am, and that really works well for youth football. I've got a 70% winning percentage. Uh, I've coached uh, about 23 seasons, and 18 of those I've been in the playoffs and uh, been in the Super Bowl nine times with four wins. So this stuff works for me, and uh, I can almost guarantee it worked for you if you stick with the program. Uh, so I like to use counter plays a lot when, to slow up aggressive defenses. So when I see DNs and corners bailing and free safeties bailing out, this is the time I want to use counter plays on those aggressive defenses. The other thing in my offense is I want to make sure I minimize mistakes and penalties and any type of turnover. I've got a mistake in there. I don't like to use that word fumble or turnover because kids start thinking about it and that's what happens. So we want to minimize mistakes and penalties if at all possible. I hate offside penalties. 
uh, holding call, not so much every now and then, but uh, let's try to minimize that. And, and this is one thing that a lot of new coaches just totally forget. This last one here is I want to be the best blocking offense in the division in the league. So look, I mean, a lot of good football teams, their head coach will go teach, will go coach the linemen. I currently coach with a guy I've been coaching now for 10 years. We're both co-head coaches. Uh, he runs the offense most of the time. And I run the defense most of the time. And he runs a lot of my plays out of this playbook. And every other season, I'll coach offense kind of thing. We go back and forth. But we, we focus, and I, I coach the linemen. And we take a lot of pride in making sure and uh, he had actually sought me out because of my, he knew I was a, a lineman guy and could coach the lineman. And so we got together and it's been, we've had tremendous success uh, from this. But our key to the old success on our offensive strategy is we want to have the best blocking line in the division. And that's really, really key to make sure you guys can focus on. Uh, it's not just about running your running backs. Uh, it's about actually blocking because if you learn how to block properly as a team, uh, an average back can actually make some yards. And so that's a big deal for you guys to focus on. Uh, some of the goals, and this is like my game goals, and I, I'll usually uh, talk about these before the game to my coaches and the players, is we, we want to score 23 points a game. In my 20-plus uh, seasons coaching football, the average is if I score 22 and a half points, we win the game. So I put a little extra there. So we want to try to score a touchdown a quarter. Uh, but definitely if we can get to 23 points, we win that game. We want to have great clock management. We want to know what's going on, how we're using the ball. If we're ahead, we want to slow the clock down by taking our time calling plays, this sort of things. We want to minimize penalties and mistakes. We want to average five yards a carry. I don't really want to throw more than 25% of the game because that a lot of times will be wasted plays because our completion percentage is so low. We're trying to, to use all four downs to make a first down. We don't want to turn the football over, uh, and especially not within our own 35-yard line. So it's critical that we get back to the 40, 50-yard line because that lets our defense deal with the situation. If you turn the ball over within your 35-yard line, it's really hard for a U football defense to stop the other team from scoring. And look, we want to create confusion on the defense using multiple formations with various plays to, 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 to make them confused and uh, not really know what's going on. We want to dictate the flow of the game and not let them set up. Because if they're always set up in you know, a 6-2 wide tackle, we want to make sure that we, you know, hit that three and four hole every time because that's going to burn them. And then if they, they adjust to that, we can do other things. So we want to be able to have multiple formations to dictate the game flow. If we're sitting in one type of offensive formation, it's hard really to dictate how that defense is going to move out maybe of a defense that's, that's causing you problems. Uh, as far as play calling strategy, and there's a couple of long articles on my blog at coachparker.org about uh, play calling strategy, and I'll try to get a link in here for that. But here's some stuff that I wrote down after a season or two ago when I was uh, I had a pretty good uh, team and we'd gone through some, uh, some stuff. And so uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to use a series of play calls to set plays up. You don't want to just run, you know, I've got a lot of formations and you just don't want to call these formations that don't kind of make sense. So you set up a D end or a D tackle or a corner. You want to use a series of plays to set up a player and putting him in a weak alignment so you can take advantage of that. An example of that would be, you know, you're running out of the swing, double wing kind of wide double wing and or even the double wing and you're running sweeps and wed you're running sweeps a couple of times and maybe a play to the right and a sweep to the right 
and you do that a couple times, and all of a sudden you come back with a counter to the left. So you're trying to set things up. And, you know, the first sweep may not work, but you want to set up the series so you, so you get to the play that's going to give you the big yards. And in the double wing swing, it's, it's the counter play. So you want to make sure you're setting a series of plays up there. Same thing in the eye. You may be hitting, you know, down the middle with the zero and two and four hole, and then you hit with a pitch sweep or even a wing reverse. So you want to think about plays and series. You want to use offensive formations to influence how the defense adjusts, splitting guys out, moving the wing out, uh, you know, going into the beast, coming out of the beast, into a swing, you know, Coming into a wide swing or a spread that back to the beast, they may have different personnel in there for a spread versus a beast, and you can catch them because they may have smaller, lighter, faster players in for the spread, and then you may have come in with a beast formation on offense, and you could run down their throats with it. So use that to your advantage there. You definitely want, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a power running game. I like to overpower power defense with more players at point of attack. I'm into a loaded, overloaded offensive line, and uh, and I call that big. Or you, you can pull people that way, too, to get more players out of attack. But uh, that's one thing I like to do on offense is I want to put more people at the point of attack. I want to use mo motion and shifts to move the uh, defenses around a little bit. Uh, and uh, that's why you've got these multiple formations. Uh, I personally like to run left most of the time because a lot of defenses will set up on the right side of an offense because they think that everybody runs to the eight holes and six holes. I like to run actually to the five and seven hole because just naturally people set that up. So a lot of teams you'll catch doing that. Uh, I want to pull more with my guards and tackles uh, at older levels. At younger levels, I really don't see this working too well. People kind of just get in the way, so I like to overload. But at junior, senior levels, I definitely want to pull more. Uh, I definitely want to use wedge blocking more for inside fullback and gut plays. I th we really want to establish the sweep and off-tackle play almost every game. That's our key offensive play, and, this, and then move off of that. We either want to spread an offense, a defense out, or move them in for the off tackle. Uh, the one thing that I'd, I'd like to do more that I'm, in my strategy is get more screens and quick passes in and really focus a lot more on my short passing game. I love the pop pass, but uh, I've come up with a couple of screens that I've seen the last couple of seasons. And I want to put those in. And we've run a couple of those with some some success. So I want to expand that a little bit. Uh, definitely, you know, I've used a managing quarterback a lot and not really as a threat. I want to get a better quarterback that, that can run uh, and that can also throw. So that will help out my play calling strategy a little bit, especially in the uh, swing formation. Uh, the other thing, we, we added this in about three or four seasons ago. We had big-time audibles and sideline calls in, which really, really worked. And so we want to expand that more. Uh, the good way to uh, relax your starting back every now and then is have your second string backs run the beast formation. And so you can get your starting back some rest in a series when your second string back is maybe running the beast formation. Uh, like I said, the, the audibles and the sideline calls for a hurry two-minute offense, we, we put in three or four seasons ago. I had 21 plays where I could just say, hey, go run play three, call you know play three from the sideline, boom, uh, or the hand signal for that, and they knew exactly what was going on. That worked out really well. We want to expand that a lot more. And look, a lot of coaches forget when they're ahead, Quit running your hurry-up offense. <laughs> you want to slow that clock down as much as possible. So just remember, especially in the fourth quarter, if you're ahead, you know, tell your quarterback to look at the ref and, you know, when he gets down to where he's counting down to 10, have him tell your quarterback, and that's when you call the play. But that's kind of the play-calling strategy and the overall strategy for the Power Wing Beast offense and what I look at 
when I'm going in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or didn't like the video, please hit me up in the comments below. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel and get updates to the videos that I bring uh, to the youth football community. If uh, you need to share this video with another coach, please do so. That helps the uh, channel. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you can shop my store. A link is below. I'll get a percentage of those sales. I got two books out right now, The Power Wing Beast Offense and the 6-2 Multi-8 Defense. Both are selling really well and getting good feedback from those. And if you want to donate a few bucks, uh, that'd be great, too. There's a button up there that you can do that. Again, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, play for fun, and winning is funner. Ciao.